Thank you for joining us for this episode. Today, we're joined by Dr. Jason Jedlicka from Indiana University, and he's going to be talking about how to develop a blockbuster scleral lens and optometry school's scleral lens education on The Eli Show. Thank you again for joining us for this episode. We're excited to have Dr. Jason Jedlicka joining us today. Dr. Jedlicka is at the uh, Indiana University and is also very well known for the creation of the Zen Lens, scleral lens. Prior to moving to Indiana, Jason had his own private practice and uh, just had a fantastic practice around specialty contact lenses. So Jason, uh, you know, how does one go about creating a smash hit scleral contact lens? <laughs> uh, dumb luck, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I mean, you know. I guess what I mean is, is how did the Zen lens start? How did it, how did it come to be? Yeah, so l- literally... We were sitting at a Contact Lens Society of America meeting in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and a um, couple was of people. That meeting? You were, I think you were, yeah, yeah. definitely. I wasn't part um, of this conversation, otherwise I would have been the <laughs> manager, maybe. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. You were, you were busy, and they kicked the, it to me. Second, the lens would have never, the lens would have never come to be, Dave, if you were part of the the the, the, the meeting. So, um, so Tom Schoen, who was with Alden Optical at the time, and Bill Shelley, who was also with Alden Optical, just said, hey, do you want to grab dinner and we want to have a talk with you? Sure, I'll take a free dinner, no problem. And um, we sat down at a little Mexican restaurant in the hotel in Albuquerque. And they just said, hey, we want to, we want to make a scleral lens. We want to get into the, to this market and we want to make a scleral lens. And would you help us? And uh, yeah, of course, I'd love to. That sounds great and um, negotiated uh, uh, an agreement to do it. And of course I got paid way too little for it, but at the time I was naive. And, um, and that's where it just started. And, and the, what's interesting was, I mean, you guys know, you, you, you fit specialty lenses too. When you, when you work with a lens for a while or lenses for a while and you recognize, gosh, I just wish I could have it this way or that way or something, you know? And you have your wish list of how, if you could do it your way, this is how I would do it. And um, that's, that's what I got to do. And it was just, you know, it was a great opportunity, particularly to work with Charlie Creighton, who was with Alden at the time. Charlie's a genius when it comes to math and, and programming lathes. And um, I, I will hesitate to say, but literally from the moment we started cutting lenses, we only went through two iterations of the lens to get to our final product. So I think it was back to where we were with uh, Rob Brees being the genius of the contact lens specialist that he was. He was an optometrist that knew how to design lenses. And I think that those of us who see lenses on the eye, we, we kind of see what the, what, it, what the fit is going to kind of look like. And so you're somebody who actually took that and put it into a lens and made it, uh, made it a reality. So how did that go about, you know, coming to market and so forth? Did you have to... Uh, put through a lot of different designs, or you said you, two two iterations, huh? Yeah. Well, so again, I mean, this is just at, at the time when we did this, there was a trend towards scleral lenses in general were running around sixteen and a half millimeters was kind of the yeah. Yeah. the latest vibe for sclerals, and and so you know one of my thoughts was well um, probably want a couple different diameters because people have different size corneas, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, but I didn't want to just have unlimited diameter choices because when you start tweaking diameter, lots of things change. And, um, I thought that would add to some unpredictability of the lens. So trying to keep the the diameter options to a minimum and and instead, uh, put in a, a fitting set, um, a series of lenses that would cover both the steep and the flat cornea. Because at the time, you know, we would fit a cone patient. I would pull one fitting lens. I'd have somebody else come in who was post LASIK. I have to pull a different fitting set because they don't both work on the same patient. So a lot of it was just really the idea that um, I would get people come up to me at conferences and say, hey, what's the best scleral lens? I want to get started doing these things. And which one would you recommend? I'd say, well, I got to tell you, it depends on the type of eye I'm working on. 
because I got three favorite sets and it just depends on what type of patient. And that, that was like a revelation that it seems like we should be able to make a, a set that has it all in one set, you know? And so, I mean, that was kind of the goal at the time was to create a, a lens that would cover the full spectrum. So if I just have one fitting set, yeah, I can fit a post LASIK eye, I can fit a graft, I can fit a cone, I can fit anybody with just this one set. Mm-hmm. So I don't have to invest in a bunch of fitting sets. Um, when we started putting it together, uh, I, I have a, a drawing. I still, I just dug it out like a couple of weeks ago because I was talking to somebody about it, but I have a, a drawing on graph paper, which was the original concept of Zen Lens. And I still have it. It's colored with highlighters and stuff. Um, but we, we really just made uh, a fitting set and we put it on a bunch of eyes and I saw eh, not enough limbal clearance, jack that up a little bit, fit it. And wow, these look really good. And literally within, again, I, I think that's a credit to Charlie for his know-how of putting lenses together. Um, and I think it was just, I don't know, the stars aligned for that one. So Jay, Jay, paper. Jay you, paper. You, 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 have, you have to take that napkin or whatever piece of paper that you drew it on, and it's got to go in the contact lens museum that's out of Pacific right now. You can <laughs> sign it my, and everything. I've got it on my computer if you want me to share my screen. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, 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 we will ask you to do that in a sec, Jay, but uh, okay, listen, cool. I, I got a question. So I've been in clinical practice for 19 years. Dave was the guy who actually introduced scleral lenses to me. And I realized that, you know, so I went to school from 98 to 2002 and I got some specialty lenses, but I realized that unless you kind of go all in the pool on this and, and, and do a residency on this, you're going to miss some things. And when I started interacting with Dave, he kind of really firsthand taught me everything that he knew about scleral lenses. And this was back in 2004, 2005. And just to see how, how far that part of optometry has progressed is like unbelievable. So I want to talk to you because I, I know where your, where your past was in private practice, but now you're at IU. How does specialty lenses play a role with how you're kind of educating the new up and coming optometrists and, and the, the soon to be optometrists? And what, what type of role does specialty lenses and specifically scleral lenses play in the curriculum at this point? Yeah, we, I mean, it's obviously growing. It's, it's clearly what, what the students want to do. Um, they, they've picked it up quickly. I have, a, I have a quick little story. A couple of years ago, I was sitting in our Grand Rounds conference we have on Thursday mornings with about 15 fourth-year students, and we were talking about fitting corneal GPs on keratoconus. And one of the students asked me, he said, so if I have a corneal gas perm and it's touching the apex of the cone, then I need to increase the sagittal depth of that lens, right? <laughs> I said, well, <laughs> then you just steepen it, really, but... but I love the fact that you guys have actually picked up the concept of depth from day yeah. one and you don't have to mm-hmm. relearn this later. And I think for the students coming out and you mentioned, you know, the idea of a residency and I, I love residencies. I try to get, you know, good quality people to, to consider those programs because we need that. Um, but I have so many students who come through here in the last five years that just went out into practice recognized, hey, I really liked doing sclerals and said, can you help me get going? And there's so many students who are doing scleral lenses. I've just graduated in the last five years. I think in some ways it's just because they don't have a history that they have to relearn things or do things differently. This is just how they've always learned it and done it. And there's a lot of students out there who don't have anything like residency experience, just decide I want to do this and they've learned. And it's great because, um, you know, their patients are benefiting. You know, you, J- Jason, you, you mentioned the thing about the SAG and, and increasing the SAG. And I think for some of our listeners, they don't necessarily know why that's so different. And, you know, it, for years and years and years, when we were fitting scleral lenses, we would be referring to uh, making them steeper. And we, 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 were, we were saying that when what we were really meaning were making them deeper. And so now we refer to increasing the SAG and decreasing the SAG, whereas years ago, we didn't use increasing sagittal depth. We didn't talk about sagittal depth. That term was not in optometry school education, hardly at all, unless you went to Pacific or maybe there was a couple places out east. 
But nowadays, it's the word of fitting contact lenses. And I love the fact that they say, oh, well, you increase the sagittal depth. Right. That's, that's really a novel thing of today. Yeah, totally. We we were increasing sag. We were just doing it through curvature changes. Right. Mm -hmm. And and the truth is, again, as we as you see scleral topography becoming more util, utilized, um, you see a lot of people transitioning to more and more using elevation topography about the eye. Which again, it's all sag based. Then you can look at true representation rather than curvature data. I don't really know what curvature data is. One of the things that we talk about is, you know, so if you're going to change a scleral lens by two diopters, is that a it's, lot or is it not is very it? much? I don't know. So, uh -huh. but I do know that if I want to change it by 100 microns, I know exactly what that means. Yeah. So it, it's, it's much more intuitive if you haven't learned a system and had to relearn it. I think for the people starting out, scleral lenses make sense. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. What, uh, what are you seeing is the, the future of the education? You know, had we known 10 years ago that we would be using different terminology and, and all of this, what do you think the, the next generation of optometry school scleral education or specialty contact lens education is going to look like? Yeah, I think that um, increasingly we're going to – you know, part of part of why we teach what we teach now, and I'll be real honest with you guys, is boards. I mean, we have to teach to boards. And five years ago, there was nothing on boards about scleral lenses. So even though it was a very clinically relevant topic, um, we had to devote a certain amount of the curriculum time to the things that are on boards. Well, guess what? I just talked to our students who took boards a few weeks ago, and there was a lot of scleral lens questions on there. So Boards are catching up to our practice mode, which is great. It's going to allow us to teach more of that. There's still the basic concepts of base curve and power and tier layer power that, that you can teach with corneal GPs too. Um, but I got to say that, you know, again, in, in a lot of ways, um, corneal GPs are not going away, but they're transitioning. We're, we're probably the, by far the number one reason I fit corneal GPs now is ortho -K which again is a very different fitting concept than traditional contact lens fitting. And in fact, I will say ortho K fitting is exactly the same as scleral lens fitting. They yeah. go completely hand in hand. Yep. So increasing and decrease. Yeah. And it's, and it's alignment on the periphery and it's bridging between that optic zone and that peripheral zone. And I mean, and it's, and it's a vault instead of Sclerals were vaulting 200 microns, while other cam I'm vaulting five microns. But the concept is exactly the same. And so, for one who understands sclerals, they really understand ortho K, whether they do or not. So, we're, you know, part of the challenge is, is to teach specialty lens fitting, you need specialty lens patients. You can't necessarily sit in a clinic lab in a, an educational building and teach people how to fit corneal lenses for keratoconus on their classmates. This is just not possible. So what, what we're doing more and more, and we actually started this a couple years ago as kind of a test, and we've moved our advanced contact lens program at IU to a completely online course. And each year that comes by, I try to add more and more video workshop to our curriculum so that they get to watch videos and see lots of photos on eyes and try to really drive it towards, um, again, a somewhat interactive. I mean, if you guys are familiar with like the GPLI click and fit, yep. which is a place where you can try different lenses on of known parameters. And we try to do that, but with GPs for keratoconus or scleral lenses. So they have an opportunity to click through a variety of lenses and, and see how they fit and see what how changing that parameter changed my fit. Mm -hmm. um, because again, we really, really don't have the means to do it in classroom settings. So we, they're relying completely on their clinical rotations for that. And there's just not always enough opportunities for everybody to get the experience they want. So we have to supplement with videos, workshops, um, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm certainly grateful that we have somebody like you kind of helping to lead the charge and contact lens education, you know, as a clinician moving into education, you just have brought a wealth of knowledge and then bringing that out back into the optometric community. We're really grateful. 
So thank you so, so much for what you've done Thanks, in, in the thank Squirrel you. Lens world. Yeah, and thank you for joining us for this episode of the Optometric Insight Show. Make sure to like and subscribe. Feel free to leave comments below. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on the next episode of the OI Show. Uh -huh.